Hello, everybody. Welcome to a very special esoteric Atlanta. Um, I am joined here with three lovely ladies who are part of the group of over 500 people who are participating in the Shadow Work Challenge. But before we get into the subject at hand, I do want to go ahead and introduce these ladies and show you guys who they are, what they are up to. First, we have the beautiful Cassie, who is below me. And she actually just did something very brave. And she opened up a YouTube channel. And we, we I know all about that. So let's show you guys, if you're not subscribe to Cassie light on change I'm gonna be putting a link to her channel down in the description box below so you can go ahead and give her a subscribe YouTube is a great platform in a lot of ways in a lot of ways it isn't but in a lot of ways it is because it does it allows you to kind of create your own platform literally um, and so we want to support our fellow our fellow um, patriots our fellow challengers our fellow human beings who are on the side of good so go and give her a change and then we have amber here who is over in california and Ooh. she owns a dance studio and you guys amber and i were chit-chatting before uh kathy and cassie came on and she amber you you guys do like competitive dance and all that kind yeah. of stuff right mm -hmm. yeah so if you and you were telling me i mean you guys made it through which is amazing because you made it through the lockdown which um we did too, but that was really hard. So you guys see they have different age brackets. So if you're up in Northern California, where, where again, what's the town you're located in, Amber? It's in Roseville. Roseville. So yeah. I will put a link to her website down in the description box as well too, guys, especially in your Northern California. I know California is a hard state for a lot of people like us to be in. So if you need a, want a like-minded business owner to get your kids involved in movements, we're going to be talking a lot about movement today. Um, Send them over to Amber. And uh, and then we have Kathy. You were telling me that you guys, ha you're in Nashville, Tennessee. You're close to me. That's right. You ha Your family has a handyman store, right, in, in Nashville? That is right. We own uh, Del Rio Home Improvements here in Nashville. Um, I would say go to the website, but it's a little bit wonky. Even after, like, seven and a half years, we're still working out the kinks. But um, you can definitely. <laughs> Find us like on social media on Facebook. Del Rio is two words, D E L R I O. Uh, I honestly believe with your, we are the only Del Rios in Nashville. So I promise you will find us. <laughs> well, once we get done, Kathy, just send me a link and I'll put everything down in the description box for anybody that's okay. in the Nashville area because we, we, we definitely want to come together as a community. That's really how I think we start to like really stick it to the man. You know, as we support each other, and we, I mean, I know it's annoying. I still have to use a lot of the big corporate sites, but if we really start to push towards other people that are running at their heart and soul, they're running their businesses and stuff like that, we start to course correct this ship that's been going in one direction and we want it going in the other. So let's yeah. get in to the topic at hand, ladies. How about it? Let's do it. You guys have been doing this 30 day shadow work challenge. I'm going to start by asking you guys, what made you, we'll start with Cassie and we'll go around the table. What made you go, you know what? I'm going to do this 30 day challenge. It was uh, getting active physically again was already on my to-do list. So it was already really important to me and I'd just been having a hard time working it in. So I was laid off from my corporate job in August and reorganizing life and trying to work back in the big rocks like this. And this was perfect timing. I'm like, I got to do it. <laughs> here you are. Yeah, here I am. <laughs> and what about you, Kathy? What made you go? Sounds like this pain and torture sounds like a really good idea. I honestly do not know. <laughs> I was like, wow, do I hate myself or love myself? I don't know. <laughs> I love both. <laughs> well, math like isn't there. Never hurt anyone, right? <laughs> That's right. It'll all be good. Honestly, um, it's funny because right before I saw you post the challenge, um, I had just been sharing, like, I am physically and emotionally exhausted. I am a mom of four. We own a handyman business. My professional title is a guide to young learners in our homeschool community. There's a lot of emotional presence that's just required in my life. And that absolutely shows up in my body. Like I'm just like fatigue is like the word I felt like followed me around. 
Uh, but for some reason, um, just a couple of days before, I just had like a, I, I, I'm, I'm searching for something. I started piddling around with working things through the body and then you posted the challenge and I was like, this sounds like a lot of work. I don't want to do and, <laughs> and I'm going to do it. I like, I just, I just followed that really quick intuitive nudge of like, just sign up. So when you said who's in, I was like, me, me. Okay. Yeah. Me, me. Yeah. Me. <laughs> I'm going to do it. <laughs> what about you, Amber? What made you go? You know what? This, this wacky 30 day commitment seems like a really good idea. I was already starting to like do all this stuff, but so I needed guidance because I was very confused and I was like, perfect. I can use this. No. And that's, that's something that is really heavily spoken about in the East um, is the guidance. And, and actually you being a dance teacher, owning a dance studio, it, you kind of, you know, we, we talk about, there's a word in Sanskrit that's called parampara or parampara is how some people say it. And this is, this is one-on-one -on -one teaching from guru to student, and I'm not a guru, but this is, it's, it's the transmutation of energy. And so like when you're using, when you're with your dance students and you're hands on, you're literally energetically teaching them as well not just through your verbal cues but there's an energy present there that's guiding them and what's so confusing too is that shadow work especially using exercises a modality for shadow work can be very triggering and very painful and when that starts to come up a lot of times there can be resistance and you don't know what to do you don't know if it's normal you don't know if you're doing something wrong. Have you guys been shocked at having to re is that that was a question I was going to ask you guys. Has your perception of exercise as spirituality changed and shifted? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Definitely. And there seems yeah. to be a little bit of playback happening with the volume. So if they, if anybody has like any like uh rate a radio one or anything like that, just check that. That's okay. Um I always tell people who watch, I'm like, I'm in my bedroom filming. We're not we don't have professional equipment. We're on Zoom. <laughs> so so and that's something that's so hard. And for me, when I first started to study this, because I come from a medical family, my mom's family, the Bryce's, the best where I get my name from is my mom's maiden name. They're all doctors for like generations. And then here I come and I'm like, I'm going to go to India and I'm going to study the doshas in Ayurveda, you know, like talk about shifting some family karma. But we're so programmed, especially in the West, to think if something hurts, then you can hold back and address in a different way. Has that shifted like body pains? What do you feel about your body, your own body pains? Whoever wants to jump in. I guess I'll go first. Um, so I was fine like the first day I did bar because like my body's used to bar because I dance. Yeah. But then when I did the yoga, it's my jaw started hurting and it went down my neck all the way into the middle of my spine. And I was like, oh, okay, I get it now. <laughs> oh, that's what they mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So we look at that, that jaw tension. So that's coming from like the throat chakra, right? Mm -hmm. And how apropos all of us, all four of us probably in the last few years have felt like we've been silenced. Mm -hmm. Basically my whole life. So it makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. And that's one thing the practice will do for you too, is it will give you, it will show you the practice in general will show you where there's issues, but then you have to figure out because you're the solution to those problems, right? You're the one that has to then go, oh, I now have to heal this. So the, the workout, the practice, whatever backs off and says, all right, I'm presenting you with the issue. Go, go fix right. it. Right? So it yeah. can be very overwhelming, but also very self-empowering too. Right. What about yeah. Kathy and Cassie? What have you guys gone through with this? Have you noticed any like lingering tweaks or pains that now you realize is something bigger? Absolutely. Yeah. I know. I I actually have a knot that in my back and my lower lumbar that I was able to work out. And I mean, there's more, but one of them is gone. But mm -hmm. I think that is that is coming from a sacral chakra blockage. And that makes complete sense with my story. 
that I'm not going to go into, but <laughs> you don't have to, so, you know, it, yeah, absolutely. And what I'm going to have you guys do because of the playback guys. So when you're not speaking, will you mute your mic? And then when you come to speak unmute, unmute your mic, that will help with the playback as well. This happens a lot when we have um, multiple people on our round table. Um, so, so my next question is, so when we're looking at the lower three now, now a lot of times people see spirituality. They want to, they want to stay up here. They want to stay in the ethereal, right? But we even see in like the missing gospels of Mary Magdalene that you have to descend or you can ascend. Mm -hmm. So has that, when we talk about the sacral chakra, the lower, and a lot of times women especially get very soft in the belly overly so which is so much showing a wound there which makes sense look at what women have been through for generations yeah. you know it's an inherited karma does that was that was that a revelation to you guys at any point that i hold descending before ascending yes <laughs> yeah and it actually links back for me to your last question of um the exercise and the pain because i I had made, I feel like I've made like little connections along the way, like birthing my children. Like I birthed with a midwife and I remember her getting in my face and saying, you can push through the pain. And on the other side is a beautiful life waiting for you. Right. So I can connect it to that one instance, but the activity of exercise, like the first three days of the challenge, I spent throwing tantrums, not even doing the exercises, like literally like fucking yelling at my phone, like cut, like just like you son of a bitch, and how dare you? Like you don't tell me what to do. I mean, just lunacy, like really just tantrums that like I haven't seen my kids throw, right? And then I thought I had all this resistance to the bar. I got up and did the. I finally didn't made it to the bar, but it was the Ashtanga yoga, and my right hip, like was screaming for days. And there, there was just such a loneliness and anxiety to getting through the descending postures in the Ashtanga that, like, was almost alarming to me, right? So sitting, so sitting through that um, was brought back to me something that a Reiki master said to me one time. <laughs> she said, when I see you, I see, like, just mounds pounds of energy coming down through here and shooting right out your hips like you're not grounded and i was like i don't want to be grounded i want to fly high you know it's like <laughs> i do not i think the epiphany for me was the intense resentment of incarnating in this body like just the sheer resentment of nope i changed my mind i <laughs> i actually don't want to be in this meat suit but something you said yesterday i think with stephanie or i heard it yesterday was about if the muscles aren't ready if there's not the strength in the body to hold the energy that's coming it can't hold it and it brought back that image of the reiki teacher saying it's all coming in but you, it's all shooting out and the body isn't holding it and i was like damn i spent so much time <laughs> resisting this really elemental piece and i really think that's what the challenge is for me well let's focus on that for a minute because that's the big one with a lot of people um and i think especially i don't know how you guys grew up i grew up presbyterian did you guys come from like a judeo-christian background as well yeah very fear-based protestant yeah so we're taught and we know when i studied way down workshop which that lady that just passed away i did a whole breakdown on it on zublik on dark outpost and i found that obesity is actually the highest in evangelical especially the baptist and it's because people are hiding their emotions because they're not able to express them so let's look at this in multiple ways so we're taught we'll use the name jesus because that's the name they use even though we know that's not his real name um they you know we're taught in the church that if you believe in jesus jesus will just take all your problems away right there'll be peace about you which is not what he's taught it, it, he never said that you know the word savior means you don't have to incarnate again so he's good he got it he got enlightenment now he's teaching you he was the guru right 
but also we're, we're kind of taught that our bodies are sinful, especially as women. And so we have almost like a fear and a resentment for being in a body. But if we look at the Eastern teaching, the body is the Shakti of the soul. It's not the soul. It's the expression of the soul. And so for you, Kathy, like, and for Amber and for Cassie, everybody watching, when your soul, now, if you study the law of one, every person on this planet right now is, a, is not a totally new soul. The new, new, brand new baby souls could not handle what is happening on this planet right now. The powers that be, great source, and all those higher beings made sure that the people who came here, the souls that came here could handle it. So we have the macro of riding this wave of an ascension for the planet, but we also have our micro as well. And our micro feeds into that macro. All this, I keep saying all this nefarious stuff that's happening with the controllers, with the, with the little ones, all none of that's going to change until we heal our own wounds. And that's where our power lies, right? That's that vibrational rising. And so, yes, I think you hit on something big, Kathy. I think especially as women, we've been taught to be ashamed of our bodies. We've been taught that our bodies are sinful. How can a body that can carry a baby be sinful? The female body is a portal. And so we're starting to understand that our bodies are actually a part through the Eastern teaching. Our bodies are a part of the spiritual experience. You know, and you're be I love what one of my favorite, I just posted one of the, um, on my community tab yesterday, I, I love Broadway. I've always been a huge fan of Broadway. Huge fan. And I love the dancing. And so I, I watched a clip from the 2012 Tonys where the play Newsies, and they did the Broadway play, I posted one of the scenes they presented on the, the Tonys and just watching what the human body can actually do. And you, you probably see it too, Amber, with dance. What the mm -hmm. human body is actually capable of doing is breathtaking. Your body is magic. It's magical. You know, it, it grew, you have four kids, it grew four babies. You know? And so when we actually can be appreciative of that and i know a lot of women struggle i've struggled with body dysmorphic disorder i've and now at 30 it took me almost 40 years to to recover from that because i've watched what my body and when you're able to and, and and throwing those temper tantrums as you were saying doing the exercises well the ashtanga practice is designed to piss you off first and foremost it's designed that way because it's it's supposed to be triggering you because it's designed specifically for shadow work right it worked it works, right? And trust me, I always say, you know, you go to the, like the fake yoga, the vinyasa flows, and you see the Indian music playing and everybody's reading poetry. And I'm like, that's not real. You go into a Mysore room, you got people with their yoga pants on backwards. Their hair looks like Albert Einstein because they're sweating so hard. And they're dropping F-bombs every five minutes. You know, it, that's real because that's real, right? Pain is real. That's the rawness of the practices pulling up. You know, so, so, so Amber and Cassie, what have you discovered about you? I mean, we, uh, Kathy said she realized she wasn't grounding. What have you guys discovered through this experience of using exercises of modality for spiritual growth? Oh gosh. You know, I know I have a lot of pent up stuff in my knees and I feel like maybe that's maybe stems to something of, you know, reticence of going forward maybe in life. Um, You're the which, future. Yeah. Yeah. Which I've always tried very to be very bold and not be afraid to go forward. That's always been important to me and jumping right in, but it's still there. It's obvious. So I think I've ignored that, that fear and just, you know, override it all the time and not dealt with it. Maybe. I don't know. You know, and that's there's common. a lot of stuff. <laughs> that's common that's common yeah that's uh we call that that's probably an element of what we would call toxic positivity where uh -huh. instead of um and emma and i have spoken a little on this we, we might do a deeper yeah. episode on this because as emmy said on a voice message once she says yeah it's like shitting in a room and then putting potpourri over the shit and hoping people don't notice 
You know, it's not, it's not, it's not, it, it's just, it's just stuffing it under the rug. Yeah. Right. And so, and so, yeah, knees are usually a sign of being a fear of the fear. It's either a sign of the fear of the future or something is so drastically happening in your hips that it's pushing into your knees. And that's up for you. Like, that's the beautiful thing. As I keep saying, through the journaling process, that's something each individual has to figure out for themselves through their own story, you know, of what that actually is. What about you, Amber? You know, Amber, you're in a different place because you've you've been in your you've been dancing, you've been you've been working with the body for a long time. So was yeah. there anything new that you're like, oh shit, this makes this is a different perspective or what about you? I, for me, it's just like time management because I'm busy all the time. Like I work like six days a week and stuff. So I just, this helped me push myself to like actually do it. So I have to wake up at 4.30 to do it all, but Girl, I'm right there with I, you. <laughs> I do it all. I do all the extra bonuses and everything, but the yoga has definitely helped a lot. Yeah. And isn't it interesting? So Kathy, you said you were scared of the bar but it ended up being the yoga. Have you guys found that you were looking forward to one modality, but then something else completely different happened versus what you were expecting to happen? And another modality is really what kind of like got in there. Anyone could jump in. <laughs> I, you know, I just, I was just excited to do all of it, but I find that, just each one is its own unique thing and, and has, I'm just amazed every day. Honestly, I don't know what to expect and it's, it's more exciting each day. <laughs> it's a great way to look at it. <laughs> yeah. It, it's painful. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> There's that toxic positivity. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that's what, that's why I love how yeah, I always talk about Ram Dass a lot. And if you guys are not familiar with Ram Dass, he's since passed away, but that man, his books affected me so deeply, especially when I was first starting my journey and first starting to go to India. And I was really faced with really hard stuff. And I realized that you can either look at these hard things or these painful things as something so dramatic and just so awful, or you can see it as interesting because that's the word he would use. Oh, this is kind of uncomfortable. Interesting. Oh, I'm, I'm literally having... I'm in my 40s and I'm having a temper tantrum at four o'clock in the morning at some guy on a YouTube screen. Interesting that I'm reacting. This is interesting. So you become your own scientist. You become your own, you know, it's, it's, it's oh, my body, my body is resisting this particular move. That's what I find very fascinating, especially you probably see it in dance too, Amber, when we're making, because one of the similarities between yoga and dance is you're making shapes with your body. So why is it that this one shape triggers me, but this other shape doesn't? Interesting. Like, right? You know, so, so it becomes this really incredible puzzle that your soul, and that's the beauty and the power of how intelligence our, soul, our souls are. So our souls all sat down before coming to this planet with our own guides and said, this is my contract. This is what I'm going to, I want to have. These are the obstacles that I'm asking for. And that was really empowering to me as, as that, oh my God, everything that's happened to me, I asked for it. Yeah. And when you I realize love, that, yeah. power. I love how you brought up Brian Weiss the other day. And because I really got into Brian Weiss um, several years ago and other people that talk about that and yeah you know the realization that we chose to be here and we chose to do all of this is um very impactful <laughs> it's empower empowering as a mom too because i have to remember that for my kids is that my kids also have a path that they've chosen and that for some reason we have chosen this path together and i i love the language of the watchful observer and in our in our studio in my studio with young learners it's that is the language that we use right like you are where you are and where you are is okay we're just we're just observing we're just practicing and then having to as the guide apply that like 
to me, this shows like the importance of the lineage of I have a teacher, my teacher has a teacher. <laughs> that teacher has a teacher, that's right? I, that's right. That's so I'm, I'm guiding, you know, young people in a particular setting. But I also in order to do that, I have to do the work. Yeah. And that's also part of the catalyst, like as a mom and as a guide, like it, it's, it's not a, it's not a luxury or, you know, it's, it's like, it's imperative to the lineage of the work. Oh, yeah. And I had a really interesting, going back to the movement, I had a really interesting experience with Richard Simmons. <laughs> okay. Who I, I remembered. <laughs> he's a guru. I love him. I'm, I'm just, I just love that guy. So. Same. I was like, oh, I really think this guy's my spirit animal because, <laughs> you know, I had glimpses of him, like of my mom, like he and my mom had similar hair. Like, I just remember that. <laughs> <laughs> but what what struck me was I love dance as as an activity, but also as a metaphor, like in getting into and like giving myself permission about 20 minutes in to sort of cut away from what he was doing and just start dancing around the room yeah. was like a super like empowering and freeing. It was it was like returning to that of a child, right? Like the freedom in the dance, like the freedom in the movement, like there's 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 no point, there's no judgment, there's nothing to prove, it's just the activity of, uh, and that was really profound, like to remember the importance of that kind of play and freedom in the body, that kind of, that kind of movement, I was surprised by that a little bit, like that, that I got so wrapped up in my own movement that I wasn't even sure what he was doing on the screen, I was just kicking ass like all around the room <laughs> somebody says no one somebody comment no one wears shorty shorts like uh like for the shorty shorts um well amber you can speak on this because you and I, I i'm glad you brought that up Kathy, because amber you have kids who compete in dance and so they're using their bodies as almost like athletes mm -hmm. but then there is also that part of dance that's art yeah. It's an expression of the soul. So maybe you could speak more on this. Have you found that there's a balance between the two? Or are they really should they really be merged together as one, the competition with the art? Well, I'm I don't really like the competition part. I grew up competing because it gave me more opportunities to perform. And you get better like to be a good at dance, you have to be competitive. But um, I, it's funny because kids do not like when we let them improv. They do not like it. They feel very vulnerable and insecure when we make them improv. Very interesting. That is interesting. I wonder if that's because I was thinking when you were talking about Kathy, um, and I know many teachers, Marnie Alton talks about this a lot because on her platform, she has a lot of what she calls the many me's where the kids will come in and do it with their parents. And she even talks about as kids, like, and I've talked about with the spine because people notice a lot of backache, which I always say it's your muscles are building, give it time. Because even as kids, we have these, these little muscles in our spine that go into atrophy as we get older and then we have to, re kids are able to move, like they're coming fresh from the spiritual world, like, right? Like they're coming like straight, straight from God. And then we come in and we corrupt them. And so that's interesting that I feel like in my childhood that we would have loved the freestyle dance yeah. that speaks great volumes of how much control the controllers have now to even be for kids to have to even follow the orders now when they're given the option to not follow the orders does that make sense am i making sense like right wild that's that's why yeah and the older they get the less flexible they become too so that's yeah and and we see this in the alternative education model as well like you know we're basically unschooling like we're inviting families and children to come in and unlearn <laughs> what you think you know and to just explore and it is you know my older ones that try to come in it is such a it's like hitting a wall it is they look at you wide-eyed when you say well what would you like to do or what would you do in this situation or you know what makes the most sense for you and what you're working on right now it's like they're they're stunned they don't and it's it's heartbreaking to me because it's like at one time you did know right because it's like oh at one time you did know and it's just covered up right now 
So I think that's a really like interesting parallel, which is why I love the metaphor of dance, is that it just it can cover a conglomerate of, of disciplines that we're that we're working on. It's interesting you bring that up and let's talk on that because one of the questions I asked you guys was what's the difference between having tutelage, accepting tutelage from a teacher and submitting to control? And a lot of what you're saying is a lot of these kids now from both you, Amber and Kathy, from what you've witnessed is that a lot of kids are now auditioned for control. Right. So, you know, and that's, I, I kind of know what the difference is between having a strict teacher and a cult leader. Like my teacher in India is very strict on us in the Shala. There are expectations that he has for us as an authorized teacher. I have to, I, you're right, Kathy, I have to practice six days a week. I have to go and always, be, every 18 months, I have to go back to India. I don't know what that's going to look like in the future because everything that's happened, but to make sure that I'm still doing my part for myself so that I can keep teaching. And, but, but as far as his strictness, it doesn't go outside of the yoga. He doesn't know where we live. He doesn't, he doesn't watch what we eat. He's not a cult leader, right? Right. So that's going to be a really hard bridge to cross when we move into this new new world. Like, how do we go from being so controlled, breaking that controlling, and then going back to then accepting tutelage from a teacher? Where is that thin gray line? You know, and it's, it's and I don't know what the answer is. We'll just have to wait and see, see what happens, you know? I think a lot of that's energy too. I think I think we, we are born with an intuition. We're born with a gut feeling. And we get gut feelings about people, but then we're told to, I think we know when somebody is, is a strict teacher for your own well-being, but mm -hmm. we also know when the opposite is true, when someone's just trying to control yeah. you. In yeah. That sense. But we're yeah. so in touch with our gut feelings that most people can't even discern that for themselves. <laughs> and as you were asking the question, it really has to, like when I'm thinking about my young people it's like they have to really be able to tap into that intuitive discernment on what is the intention behind the tutelage that i'm being offered right it's like i need to be able to discern the intention the heart and mind and purpose behind what's being offered to me is and is it of sound mind and sound heart and good intention and for well-being or is it for manipulation and control or for like conversion, right? They're trying to convert me to a way of thinking or being in the world. You so funny you say that. I was telling Stephanie's been down here doing classes, Reiki, and all that kind of stuff. And I we have a big uh, Hindu temple here in Atlanta that I wanted to take her to because you can do their services are very different. They don't have someone lecturing at you. It's just chanting and prayer, and that's it. You want to take her there. And I was telling her that the uncles that work there, I asked them once, like, you know, in the Christian church, if you want to become a Christian, it's like a whole thing. Yeah. Information, classes. And I asked the uncles there, I said, what does one do to become a Hindu? I'm just curious. Like, if I were to become a Hindu, what would I have to do? And the uncle looked at me, goes, you just say you're Hindu. <laughs> oh. That's, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Very different. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a decision or a confession. It's like you, 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 there's no one you have to answer to. You just decide yeah. what you want to yeah. be. And so you're right with that intent. What's the intention behind? Okay. You no, know, there was, if you want to be a Hindu, you just say you're Hindu. Like right. there's no giving money. There's no yeah. someone else. Yeah. It's you and God. Yeah. That's right. You know? How do you think, you guys, so if more and more people start to understand this philosophy, I mean, Yahshua said it, the kingdom of heaven and hell is inside of you. If you want to know God, you know the self, the higher self, which is what connects to God. So these teachings are actually, what you're doing right now in the 30-day challenge is what Yahshua taught. It's what the Gnostics went through. How do you think, if we, when we move into this new world, how do you think people are going to adapt? Do you think people are going to have an easy time adapting to this? theory or do you think they're going to have a hard resistance to it i think they're going to have a hard time initially especially after what we just went through yeah are you three willing to that point since you've been doing this whenever that flip happens who knows when that's going to happen would you three be willing to take on more of a leadership role in helping your communities work through the shadow side yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, actually at the beginning of the lockdowns <laughs> um I felt a really clear message, like your work is going to be on the back end of this. Yeah. Uh, I just don't know. I, I've been sensing a lot um, 
like I hear Tamara in my ear right now saying, stop chasing the money. And like, it's very pertinent to where we are right now as a family. And it's almost like a, you're going to have to turn your vision <laughs> towards what you think you're going to be doing and stop chasing the money. Like if it comes great, but the work is going to be different. Yeah. And I, as I'm talking, I'm wondering if that's sort of the cusp that I'm feeling that like I'm on, like I'm on the leading edge of myself. That's what it feels like. That's a great, well, that's one thing too. We have, I, I've, I've mentioned this a few times, but are you ladies familiar with the term Dharma? A, a little bit. Yeah. So your Dharma, if you, if you want to know more about Dharma, the Bhagavad Gita talks to you, your Dharma is like your, your path. It's your, it's your, so we have the micro, but we have the macro as well. And it's funny because in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna is on the battlefield. He's like, all of a sudden doesn't want to be a warrior. And God appears to Arjuna as Krishna. And he's on the battlefield and he's like, please, I don't want to do this. And Krishna's like, toughen up, buttercup. This is what you signed up for. This is your yeah. dharma. Like, yeah. This is your soul contract. Like, what do you mean? You can't, you can't abort mission now. Like, you got to toughen up. And so yeah. when we look at our work, I do believe we are meant to work. We are meant to work, but we're not meant to work in a matrix. Right. We're meant to work in the healing arts, teaching dance, Amber, like doing things that you're passionate about, that you actually, you know, we have to make money to pay the bills, but I would do, I mean, I, the 30 day, day challenge was free. Like I would do this for free, you know, cause this is what I'm passionate about. And it's what it makes sense to me. It's from the heart. And so can you imagine the world we're going to live in when every single human being understands what their Dharma is and does it? Yes. That'll be beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. I don't think we would have as much depression, anxiety, but then of course that means that the whole financial system has to crumble. Because you're right, Kathy, they put us in a position where they're dangling the carrot in front of us. We can't go off grid. We have to be on grid in order to, to survive. Well, and they so twisted it. The, the carrot that we're chasing is actually their carrot, but yeah. they've convinced us that it's for us, but it's not. Yeah. It's for them. <laughs> I mean, the, the I always say this, like, you know, you could say anything you want to say about the controllers, but they're damn smart. They're smart. Yeah. And they're scary smart because they're psychopaths. So there's like yeah. no moral compass to hone in. If they, if, they were, if they had a moral compass, that intelligence could be used in such a powerful way. But without the moral compass, it is very service to self. And so I think most people, I believe that like 99% of the world population is good and wants to do good, has guilt, has has compassion, has empathy. And so if we remove that carrot that's not ours anyway, yeah, I don't, I mean, I know some people are supposed to be accountants because that's their dharma and they're good at math and they're good and they love it. But most of the accountants out there are probably supposed to be Reiki healers. Yeah. You know, and I said the same thing to people before, Kathy, like when people, I don't, I don't remember what I, I don't know. And I say to people, if you take away all fear, you couldn't fail. There's no way you would ever fail. Fear is gone, no inhibition, then what would you do? And most of the time when you say that to people, they know exactly what they would do. And so that fear is a big block as well for people. And a lot of that is the fear of not being able to pay the bills, the fear of not being able. But then also you have to remember, like if someone is homeless, because I really struggle with seeing homeless people. Oh. We lost Kathy. Um, I, I really struggle with seeing homeless people, but I always remember they, they agreed to that for something they needed to learn. Your soul agreed to it. Doesn't mean we shouldn't help them. Our souls agreed to help. But, you know, so, so what, what has in this experience, has there been anything that's come up for you ladies that has like scared the shit out of you that you've had to do? Uh, I, journaling has always been a challenge for me. Um, and I understand how important it is. So, but I, I'm, I'm tackling it more directly now. I've been trying to do it for probably my whole life. I literally have journals everywhere with spotty entries covering years. But now I'm really focusing on it. And I, it's not fun, but it's good for me. And so I'm doing it. <laughs> oh, 
we lost Kathy again. <laughs> what about you, Amber? What is something that's really scared the shit out of you in this practice? Because that, as I say, that's the, that's the juicy part, right? That's the interesting part. I don't, the stuff that you're good at, that's boring. Mm -hmm. What scared you? Because that's where it's juicy and interesting. Uh, doing the inner child thing was hard for me because I did not have very, like, no, it's not my mom or anything, but the rest of my family, I was just like, you know, rejected by everyone. No, they just didn't like me. I don't even know why. Just like growing up and at dance, no one liked me. So writing all that stuff out was very hard for me. Yeah. Well, I hope, did you find any clarity going through that? I knew that was going to be a very hard, this is a hard week in the challenge. There's a lot. And I, I just, um, childhood wounds are some of the most, some of the most difficult to, to tackle. And I've been through trauma therapy. I've gone through it all. But one, one thing, and that's why I had you guys listen to Kwan Yen again, is like seeing yourself as that little tiny girl being held by, by, it makes me emotional by Kwan Yen. And then writing that letter to yourself as a child and telling yourself, telling that child, you are loved. You are here on purpose. You are a fractal of God. And that child, whatever happened to that child, that child was innocent. Children are innocent. And realizing that that child is still you. And that's why I really wanted, and I even suggested, if uh, did you guys do that? Did you write the letter to your inner child? Mm -hmm. Was that yeah. healing or was what, what was your experience doing that? Yeah, I feel like it was healing because I made me realize like I didn't do anything wrong. It wasn't me that did it. They just have something against me. I don't, I don't know what it is. You know, There's probably something against themselves. Yeah. So people project, mm -hmm. put, project onto you. Mm -hmm. their own wounds and so you're right you did nothing wrong it was people in your life that had their own wounds that they were not mm -hmm. working on and so when something hurts like if you have a hot potato you throw it right mm -hmm. so people have these things that hurt and they're uncomfortable so they just take it they just throw it they throw it on somebody else because they don't want it and if you're an empath energetically if you are empathic which i think all three of you probably are then you're gonna and you have a kind heart you're usually going to be that target mm -hmm. that receives that hot potato because energetically you are the person that pro you probably were the little girl that would sit at the table with the kids that weren't being talked to just so they would feel better, you know? And, um, and that's, I I'll tell you when I was in trauma therapy, I had to go through a time when I was like eight years old. I still remember it to this day. And I remember being in the car and this was before and when I was a kid at eight, we got us in the front seat. It was before all those weird. Now kids like have car seats until they're in college. Like, I don't really understand it. <laughs> but um, I'm like, this kid's 17. Why is he still in a car seat? You know, but, um, but I remember sitting in the front seat of, of the truck. And my, my uh, legs were hanging out. My dad was in the car. And I said something about something I wanted to do when I was a grown up. And my dad said, no, you won't. No, you won't. But my dad did that all the time to us. I'm cold, dad. No, you're not. I'm hungry, dad. No, you're not. And I was telling my trauma therapist how that memory is so ingrained in my head. And we talked about how it made me feel, how it disempowered me. And then she asked me, my therapist asked me a question. She said, okay, well, you're an aunt. Because she said, now you have to start mothering your, your the inner child in you that was wounded. You're an aunt. If you were driving and your nephew said something to you about what he wanted to do and he grows up, what would you say to him? And I said, I would say that sounds really cool, Charlie. I hope you get to do that. And so my therapist said, okay, now say that to yourself. And that's when I kind of got it that my dad is wounded. And so he threw those wounds on his kids. And I think a lot of parents do that, either consciously or subconsciously. Because um, we're all, and that's one of the most groundbreaking things, I think, is when you realize you come to a certain age in your life and you realize your parents actually don't have it all figured. You know, when you're a kid, you think your parents know everything and they just do everything right. And then there was this, I think it was, I was in college when I realized, oh, my parents have no fucking clue what they're doing. Look at this. It's all just a free for all for everyone. They're just doing the best they can. We're all just doing the best we can, you know? So Kathy, I asked them, was there something in this challenge that scared the shit out of you? What's the one thing in this challenge that has scared you the most? 
Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> Technology is hard. <laughs> you're still on mute. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Sorry, I had to change gears. My laptop died. I couldn't find the charger. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It happens. Um, something that has scared me. Hmm. Like you were like, oh shit, when you saw this thing on the on the schedule. I think, oh. Um, I, I think the other ladies were talking about maybe the exercise with the journaling to the inner child. Um, which is something I started years ago with like EMDR mm -hmm. and that kind of um, work. I, I think just one quick comment to that. One of the things that I was thinking of as you were talking, Bryce, was there's a book called The Four Agreements. Yeah. And one of the agreements was I'm not going to take things personally. Yeah. Right. It's like understanding that what people are doing is about their own journey and their own stuff. Yeah. That was really like revolutionary to me. <laughs> Like that I had permission not to take those things personally. And that so much of my journey has been reparenting myself. And I swear to God, having kids, there is nothing that will light a fire under your ass <laughs> to get your work done than seeing generational shit come out on your kids. Yeah. And um, that was a huge catalyst into being really intentional about um, continuing to try to reparent myself. And part of that was, I'm not going to take my parents' trauma and their lack of awareness or their lack of work as something personal to me anymore. It really isn't about me and I have permission to do what I want to do. The second part that came up with me in relation to the, the childhood work was dance, like seeing Amber with her dance studio. When I was little, I swear to God, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> When I was little, um, I sing. I loved dancing. I wanted to cheer. I wanted to like do theater. Um, but our household was so fear-based and it was so fundamentally religious. There were so many rules. And my, my parents lived and died, especially my mom, lived and died by those doctrines. Like there's just so many rights and wrongs. I wasn't allowed to dance. I wasn't allowed to go to the movies. Um. And I got, I received the message. I was told everything you love is evil. The things that stir your heart, the things that excite you. Like I was like a blasphemous like entity in, in her eyes. And so like seeing Amber with her dance studio and like, like seeing kids get to like experience those kinds of things. I think what scared me at the most in this challenge was that, in this physical body I'm in, I'm not going to have the courage to invoke and engage those activities in this lifetime. Does that make sense? Yes. Like, I'm not going to, like, there's something, like, I can see my strength in a myriad of areas of my life. Like, I can point to things and say, that is badass. I can do that. But there's something about the body that I'm in right now and embracing those things in this lifetime, particularly around like dance and theater and singing and the things that I love to do. I think there's a little bit of fear that those things will always be robbed as if I won't have the courage to reclaim those things. If that makes sense. Have you read the Magdalene manuscript? I know I did it on my channel. I haven't. In the Magdalene manuscript, Magdalene gets into her and Yahshua's sex life. So all those things. <laughs> now I'm of the belief because I grew up. My fam, my church was not as fundamentals as that. Like we took dance, we did, we wore bikinis, all that kind of stuff. But your body is so powerful because it's the shakti of the soul. I believe the controllers know this. They're going to do everything they can to make you afraid of your body. To make the body wrong because we are the storm mm -hmm. we can't leave our bodies in this life this is our temple and i'm actually going to challenge you kathy i think you at some point either in your house or rent a room i think you should throw a dance party i think you should invite your friends their kids either do it at your house or like go 
rent a space somewhere for the evening. You can even do a go get there with a donate and just Richard Simmons the shit out of it. Like throw a dance party. Yeah. Let it be a party of a celebration of life. Why do we, mm -hmm. I know people call funerals celebrations of life. Now, why do we have to wait until we're dead? That's right. To celebrate the life we're in. You have this powerful body yeah. that was designed. I mean, Genesis 1, 3, God said, let there be light. The original word for light was the Hebrew word that meant divine spark. Genesis yeah. 1, 3, God said, let there be you. How can you be so bad and blasphemous if you are the divine spark of God? Yeah. There's just a constant having to remember and remind. Mm -hmm. it's, oh, yeah. It's just the continual, oh, no, wait, remember? Those are their issues, not mine. That's right. Oh, remember? Yes. Yeah. And I'm going to one-up you. So we, are, we take on our family karma. That's one of the karmas that we agree to inherit is our family karma. What if you're the person that course corrects all that family karma? Yeah. What if that's how powerful you are? Same for you, Amber. Same for you, Cassie. What if you're the person because you're so vibrationally strong that you agree to come down to course correct this. Yeah. yeah I, I think that's exactly right. <laughs> I think that's exactly right. I, I think my hiccup right now is embodying that in my body. There is, a, there is a spiritual, there have been so many encounters. Like it, it is like, the wake up calls have been loud and clear. There is there, my hiccup is, is I think accepting and receiving that in, in this body and living it out in this body and not out of my head. Oh yeah. Get out of your head. The yoga uh, sisters not, tell you one hundred. Tangeline's like your yeah. head's going to fuck you up every time. Yeah. <laughs> like, get, out of, get out of the head and just trust this body like in trust in, in this heart yeah. and yeah, like I think sometimes the calling feels big and I feel like I'm still rising to the calling. Does that make sense? It's like, I'm still filling out my clothes. Like I'm still you are like the calling though. So why do you have to rise to anything? You are the calling. All of you are. So thinking that there's something that you have to be to be the calling is incorrect thinking. Because you are the calling. You're already enough. Yeah. You are where Kathy, you are the Kathy that you agreed to be in this life. Amber is the Amber she agreed to be. Cassie is the Cassie. She, you're already there. You're already enough. All you're doing is just confronting that. And continuing to, because it's, uh, and it's never, and I'm telling you 16 years later, like you're, I'm still, I still deal with that. I still deal with the inadequacy feeling. Am I doing this right? All those things. That's just the ego. And I, when I was living in Los Angeles and right after college, I remember an old lady said this. Old people can be wise. <laughs> she said, what someone thinks about you is none of your business. That's, oh, that's so true. And oh, that God. was a huge, like when she said that, I was like, she's right. Yeah. She's right. I had this same experience in a 12-step program where someone leaned across the table and said, what fucking business is it of yours? What she thinks about you? Yeah. Even like my mother, like what fucking business is it of yours? What she thinks about you stay in your lane and do your own work. It's like, well, damn. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, my parents don't, my mother, I don't, I, I have a boundary up with my father, but my mother, she doesn't like that. I'm going through the missing books of the Bible. And whenever I ask her, why does she think this is wrong? She can't answer me because it's programming. Right. And I see that that's her programming. That's her resistance. That's her telenovela. That's not my telenovela. I'm open to it. I've always been open to it. Right. You know, my resistance lies in other things, but that's her resistance. That's her karma to work through in this life. Yeah. And I take it personally. And I think when it's our family, we always take it personally. Yeah. Because that's our family. But then I, I like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that, um, like, I started the Shadow Work Challenge because we were talking about helping to clear family trauma. Our families, tra you know, our families on our dharma were helping to clear their karma. 
maybe. And I've, that resonates a lot. I think it seems like probably for all of us, but when I started the shadow work challenge, I did it because I wanted to kick up my physical activity and it's helped me get to a point where now I'm healing myself so I can help heal others because I know that I can't really heal my other help others heal until I heal myself. Absolutely. And that's the one thing I've said this before, like in traditional yoga, you know, now in the corrupt yoga, they do 200 hour courses where you that that's not legit, like you need to spend years studying this. And the, the only way that I'm able to hold people's feet to the fire is because my feet have been held to the fire. And so in that sense, I know I know what the liberation looks like. And I, I will say too, with the exercise as well, I, I was watching this, I'm such a nerd, because I'll watch all these when I'm not studying spirituality, I'm watching stuff on the body because it's just the body just fascinates me so much. And I was watching this video on, on runners, runners. And this girl said, you know, I started running to lose weight, but now I'm running because my body can do it. And that act of celebration in that moment of look, and you probably felt this way, Amber, with dance, like, look what my body can actually do. Mm -hmm. Like my teacher, David Greig used to stop and like, he would watch NFL, NFL players in slow motion to see how agile these like 300 pound men could be. And he'd watch and He wasn't competitive. He didn't care about the sport. He was just trying to see like what their, the magic and the majesty of the human body is unbelievable. And the fact that the church, and not just the church, there's also all sorts of places that try to take that power away from you. It's, Kathy, that's your fucking body. That's your Shakti. I want you every morning to get up and say, this is my Shakti. This is my expression of my soul. This is me not expressing grandma's soul or the guy down the street's soul. This is my soul expressing itself. Amber, I want you to get a Kuan Yin. A little statue of a Kuan Yin. Right. And I want you to put it on your bedside table or wherever you can. Okay. Because what is these, these higher, I don't know what we want to call them. The Sophia code activators, the, they're all showing you reflections of their own self. And so that love you feel from Kuan Yin, that's you. That's your own love. Yeah. And Cassie, I think you need to be taking your expertise from your corporate job, taking what you learn from that and get prepared to be helping people to walk across the fire too. Yeah. Cause that's hard. I tell people all the time, that's the shittiest part of my job in the MISO room. That's the part I hate the most. Cause I'm an emotional basket case. I'm so sensitive. And when I see students having a breakdown and having their like come to Jesus moments, all I want to do is sit on the mat and cry with them, but I can't, I have to tell them to get up. I have to be like mean and be like, get up, do it again, because I have to get them to get through that breakthrough, right? Because it's always darkest before the dawn, right? When your body is the most sore, everything's super tight. You want to give up. You want to cry in the corner. That is right before a breakthrough. And so many people will stop at that moment because it becomes too much. But I just want to say, hold on. If you got to crawl, crawl. It doesn't matter how fast you're going if you're going in the wrong direction. Likewise, it doesn't matter how slow you're going if you're going in the right direction. But wherever you are in the moment, whether that's a hot, I mean, I call this the hot mess express. I mean, you're always going to be on the hot mess express. You just get used to it because there's not there. And I want people to know watching this. There is no finish line. Yay. There's no finish line. <laughs> the, the, the grave is the finish line. But what a joy that is to learn so much about, I mean, to end this episode, because I know you guys, some of you guys have some scheduled stuff to do. What is the most shocking thing, positive, shocking thing you've learned about yourself in this experience so far? That I'm stronger than I thought, like mentally. Amber, just looking at you, if you were my student, I can, I can already tell you're a very mentally strong person. If you came into my yoga shala, I would have picked that up on you right away. So I'm glad that you're seeing that for yourself. Cassie, what about you? That um, I was starting to have doubts about being able to heal myself, like parts of my body. 
And um, I, I feel like I can do that now. And that's huge. It makes me want to cry. <laughs> Isn't that the power? That's the plot, plot twist, yeah. though. I say that like it's kind of comical, like, oh, I caused this, so I can actually reverse. I can <laughs> actually undo it because I did it. So I can now undo it. Like when you figure that out and it might take a while. Like I, I was saying in the group this morning, people are a little confused over the dosha. And I was saying, you're not going to have the answers at once. It's going to take time. And it's only time that you have within your own essence of learning how to heal yourself, what works for you. And a lot of times we're just experimenting to see what works and what doesn't. What about you, Kathy? What is the most shocking, riveting, positive thing you've discovered about yourself in this during this time? Oh, shocking and riveting. Um, I think two things like physically, I am stronger than I give myself credit for and I'm more flexible than I give myself credit for. You know, I'm in a very voluptuous body right now. I'm totally coughing. <laughs> like, like I am, like, you know, I'm Cuffadocia. Like we've got curves. We're very cushiony. Yep. Um, but it doesn't mean that my body is inflexible. It oh, no, coppers it, are very flat. I, I keep telling people my next life I want to be a coppa. Because coppas <laughs> have the juiciest, oh my God. I joint, know coppas struggle with their weight, but beyond that, like you guys have the juiciest joints. Yeah. I, I'm more flexible than I give myself credit for. Um, I, so I, maybe that's the mo maybe that's the most shocking. I think just like don't give myself enough credit in general. Like I, I just really want to play small, but I don't think. <laughs> but I don't think that's my calling. <laughs> Why? No, you don't. What is that? What was that reality show where someone said, "Don't steal my sparkle." I love that. I like, yeah, that's your mantra, Kathy. Every time you start to feel that the the the, the samskaras of your parents just be like, "Don't steal my sparkle." Sparkle. <laughs> so, I'm getting a tiara and a wand, and <laughs> don't steal my sparkle, man. I came here to sparkle. So you know that's that's um you know and there are times in our lives where we do play small, where we are sitting back and observing and learning, and then at, there comes a time where the universe pushes you forward. You know, and that's, and that's what that's, uh, that's, you know, we, we go through phases of cocooning is what they call your cocooning and then mm. you're a butterfly and then you cocoon again. And it's just different stages of an ebbing and flowing of energy. And yes. I'm okay. One last question. So I'm kind of jumping ahead, but at the very last day, the 30th of November, I, in the challenge, I don't know if you guys have read ahead. I challenge you to, for the month of December to pick one thing to do that scares the shit out of you. Have you guys thought about that? What that challenge is going to be for you for December? I could be starting a YouTube channel, which you already did, Cassie. It could be training for a 5K. It could be taking a Reiki course. It could be Kathy. It could be signing up. Amber, there are studios that offer dance lessons to adults, right? Oh, yeah. You should start with tap. That would be the easiest. Yeah. It's more structured than like jazz and stuff. That's a good word. I like that. So, Kathy, you could even look at taking dance classes. I could. Get that childhood fantasy out. And I love tap. Listen, again, I love my Broadway. I yeah. will. Anything goes any day watching that tap. More tap. We all need the life. How much better would life be if we lived in a musical? That's right. Awesome. <laughs> we great. just tap dance down the street. I say we create that. What? <laughs> So jazz hands. Jazz, we can have Amber just choreograph life for us so we can just <laughs> shuffle on down the street. You know, instead of actually having a revolution, we could just sing about one and then it happens. Okay. We'll sing about it. Yeah. I that. My dog almost every day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I tell I tell my you guys, I'm serious. I'm up at like four o'clock in the morning and I don't I give myself like an hour before I actually start my practice. I ain't got my headphones on. I've got thoroughly modern Millie playing. I've got anything goes. Well, I am a tap mm -hmm. I'm a tap dancing legend in my living room. I love my it. My dog is my biggest fan. I think I am some Broadway star. It is the most liberal. And then I'll do my practice after that. But it, just to get that out, to feel that magic, you know, in the body. And, you know, so what's something if you, on the top of your head, what's something you can do in December that you're terrified of, but you really want to do? Hell, it could be jumping out of an airplane, skydiving. I don't know. Oh, I think oh there are two things that come up. Um one is like I don't know that I've completely like been honest about 
spiritually who I am, like coming out of the spiritual closet, sort of say, like there's like, like telling the truth about myself and not shying away from who I am and like what that's my role one. is. So that's one. And two would be singing again. Like good girl, go, you live in Nashville. <laughs> there are tons of karaoke bars. See, Carrie, when you say karaoke, like getting up like that, my heart just started pounding. Actually, like when you sent the message out to like be on the round table for the show, my heart started started pounding so bad and my face went beat red. And I was like, I, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do this because I'm so terrified right now. Boom! Of, Isn't that I, a revelation? Yes. I think, y'all, what do you think? I think Cassie uh, Kathy needs to go and uh do some karaoke. Uh, Just have a beer beforehand, it'll be fine. Vodka, it's fine. <laughs> I'll be good. You yeah, know, God came down to earth. He totally have a beer with us, right? Like totally. it would probably blow the fundamentalist mind, but he totally have a beer with you in that, totally. in that karaoke bar. And I think you need to, I do think, and Amber, maybe you can help her find a good studio in, in Nashville and get you into some tap dancing classes. I would yeah. love that. That Tap's sounds fun. What about you, Cassie? What's something that you're terrified of that you're going to do in December that you, but you want to do, but you're, you know, it's, it's really funny, but karaoke probably hits the nail on the head because I actually, I write song lyrics. I sing them in voice notes. I've been doing it for years. I've had whole songs I've written and everything. I am teaching myself the ukulele because, you know, I don't have a guitar, but, uh, I don't really like the idea of getting up in front of an audience and singing. <laughs> so, I think if y'all live close to each other, I think you guys should go do it together. Do it. Come to Nashville. <laughs> oh, I wish I could. I'm in Oregon. <laughs> Road trip. Road trip. <laughs> right? That would be awesome. Well, we Mr. T, if you're watching, when we have that big celebration, you know you're going to have to get the world's largest karaoke machine. <laughs> right? <laughs> What about you, Amber? What's something you're terrified of doing? But you want to do in December anyway. Well, I do want to learn Reiki. Mm. I do want to learn that. And all I've ever done is dance my whole life. So that would be very different than what I've ever done. So I don't know. Amber, you're in the group signal chat, correct? Mm -hmm. You should message Emmy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Emmy's been doing this for a real, uh, Stephanie just got her attunement. Um, I think that for Reiki, you do have to be in the presence of someone because they have to show you and do the symbols. Mm -hmm. I think you should do that, Amber. Okay. Don't you ladies think she'd be an incredible healer? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've already you? told Emmy, I've told Emmy, as soon as you get this school up, <laughs> you let, you know, like I will be your first student. Like just do it, go for it. Yeah. Talk I want to do it. She can help you find people in your area that can attune you. I think I, I Amber, and honestly, like the fact that you work with kids all day, I mean, God bless you guys, because kids are practicing themselves sometimes. Mm -hmm. so the fact that you have the heart and the patience, and I think that's why you need a Kuan Yin statue as well. And how interesting you had a, a painful childhood, but look at the job you picked as an adult. Mm -hmm. that's You're nurturing children. Yeah. So what does that tell you about your soul? You went through hell but you haven't projected that you've become the opposite of that. Right. You're now nurturing kids and teaching them dance. And so you should be really proud of yourself because how many people go through abusive childhoods and then they turn around and they're abusive themselves. And that just hit me. Like you talked about how that was hard for you, but look at what you do every day. You, you have, have no idea. The, we have all the special kids that are like, you know, the rejects and stuff. So we all have a good time. On yeah. Our so, night, so think about how many of those kids you're working with that are going to grow up and they're going to have such a fond memory of you. You, you have no, we say that what people think about you is none of your business. So you don't even know the impact that you are making on these children. You don't know what these kids are going through behind closed doors. So the fact that you went through a hard childhood, but now you are actually loving on children for a living. Wow. That's super powerful, Amber. That's so pow You are a very strong soul. So you should be very proud of yourself. You are Kuan Yin. Mm -hmm. And so I think Reiki attunement is definitely 
right up the alley with what your soul's already doing. So message Emmy. Emmy's okay. so nice. Mm -hmm. Every, everybody I film with is they're they're the same off camera as they are on camera. So they're all here to help. And so yeah, I would definitely talk to Emmy if any of you guys are interested in, and and she can help you. She's been doing this for a long time, so she knows you know more about what's going to be a, a, maybe a scam and what's not to kind of help you guide you to the right uh, so that you find the right people to help attune you. So yeah, I like, like me with yoga. Like I could probably look at a yoga studio and tell you if it's a scam or not. So, you know, so, you know, so we, we want to make sure everyone's on the right, right page. Well, lady, it's been, it's been a little bit over an hour now. I appreciate you guys so much. What is the one? So if there is, I'm going to, to close out, I'm going to let you guys close this out each by telling if anybody's watching right now that thinks they're not strong enough to do a 30 day shadow work challenge what's the one word of advice you can give somebody watching right now who wants to do this but might be afraid to do it mm. one word <laughs> <laughs> oh, not one word sorry just a, a line of advice like what's something you could tell somebody your final word basically your final your parting your departure what would you tell someone that's terrified uh, to do this but wants to? That you'll never know how strong enough you are until you try. Try. Be good. That you can do it, even if you think you can't. You can. You just have to start. Starting's the hardest part, isn't it? Just yeah. Happen. I think I would say you are more than you know. And if you don't believe that yet, find a way to hear that every day until you do believe it. So you're more than you know. You're more than you know. You're stronger, way stronger than you think, or you wouldn't be here. And you wouldn't even be contemplating taking a journey such as this. The second thing would be you have nothing to prove. It's not a competition. There is no judgment. No one's watching you. No one's, watching. Cat. Yes. <laughs> no one's watching you. You're free to just explore and practice. And, and that's all it is. It's. Yeah. I would say diamonds are created under pressure. Mm -hmm. So, all right, ladies, we are going to be doing, I'm going to let you guys know on Aquarius rising Africa. When the, when the um, challenge ends, we're going to do a live show with them because of their, um, equipment <laughs> i'm technologically stupid so i don't know how to do all this fancy stuff but Mornay is like a genius when it comes to this stuff so they have a way where they can drop a link into the chat and so people anybody can come in and talk about it at the end of the 30-day challenge so i'm going to go and start spreading the word about that because that's coming in like a little over a week yeah um, i know for the americans we've got thanksgiving coming up that's going to be a huge part of the challenge next week for our Friends who are not Americans, I'm giving you the opportunity for you to learn from us Americans because you got Christmas coming around the corner. As Ram Dass says, you think if you think you're so enlightened, go try spending a week with your family. Our families are our karmic relations. They're supposed to trigger us. And so we are going to be preparing for that this week. That is actually my favorite quote by him is because <laughs> it's just so true. It's so true. You, you think you're so enlightened to spend a week with yeah. your family. <laughs> Yeah, like case in point, like I think last Christmas, I left the Christmas dinner table sobbing. Like, <laughs> And look, you're giggling about it now. See how great life is when you do shadow work. It's like, this is, this was so uncomfortable, LOL. Like, it's just, that's what I love about Rob Doss. He makes you see the most awful things as like comical oh. even. Like, well, yeah. that's just, look at this plot twist. Look at yeah. this crazy resistance yeah. I've, I've created. So anyway, guys. I Go think ahead. I returned. I returned to the room and literally was like, ta-da. Jazz hands. Just, just bring your tap shoes, right, Amber? She can just bring her tap shoes and just start doing some tap in the in the in the in the kitchen. It was great. I, you know, I think I think it would be great if you brought the Magdalene manuscript to Thanksgiving dinner so all of your super religious family members could read about oh. Magdalene and Yahshua's sex life. That oh would God. be very interesting. I would pay to see that. I love that so much. <laughs> You know, and you can also say when someone pisses you off, just be like, and peace be with you. Peace be with you. That's what I try to do sometimes when someone's really pissing me off. I just say in my head, I'm like, and peace be with you. Like the Catholics do, and peace be with you. <laughs> I 
Love it. <laughs> so or you can always talk about hologram pope i mean that's a fun one for the catholics i know the protestants don't like the pope anyway but just talk about and show them the video of hologram pope be like what's oh, real we don't even know it's real anymore <laughs> my, my favorite is when my relatives come in and they see my tarot cards and things and like my incense burning and the, <laughs> they immediately start like crossing themselves <laughs> uh, you should just bring some sage and just start lighting the sage at dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, they'll probably think it's marijuana. Actually, that might help too. So, <laughs> slip a little Xanax in the turkey, you know. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Don't drug people without their consent, guys. I just thought was a joke. Right. <laughs> yes, drugging people bad. Don't. <laughs> If they consent to it, then that's a good time. But <laughs> they don't, bad. So so anyway, I know you guys all got your day to get on with. Um, once again, guys, please check out all of their links down in the description box below. Go subscribe to Casey's channel. Help get it so hard when you first open a channel because you got to catch those algorithms. I also do not have a platform without David Zublick. So go and give Casey a subscribe. Cassie, I'm going to keep saying Casey. I'm looking at Kathy. I'm looking at y'all's y'all names combined. I'm doing like a Brangelina type thing here. Um, what was that I said yesterday? I think I was on the phone with Emmy. I said I was we were talking about the yoga and the Reiki, and I was like, you know, the Yakey. And I was like, that's what we should call our course. The Yakey. <laughs> like the Brangelina of the spiritual world, the Yakey. So and go check out Amber's dance studio if you were up in the Northern California area, guys, and your child, especially if you're one of us. You know what I mean? I have to be careful what I say on YouTube, but you're one of us. You know what's going on in the world. You know what's going on with these, with these, you know, I know Amber, you said you, it does, you, you don't, whatever people want to do, but if you want your kid involved in um, an activity where they're with someone that's not going to force this onto them, you've got beautiful Amber here that has a great studio to give them a place to come and grow and learn. And Kathy, I, if you guys live in the Nashville area, <laughs> Message Kathy. I want to see video. I want to see video of this karaoke. It's on. And I want I want to see you tap dancing. We're doing it. I want to see it because you know some of these Broadway actors might not be here soon. So we're gonna have to have new stars. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call them? Understudy? Oh no, girl, you're gonna be the leading role. Tap dancing away. You and Amber are gonna be up there on Broadway doing the shuffle. <laughs> Tapping out to anything goes. It's like literally my dream. When I was a child and people would ask me, what do you want to do? I'd say, oh, I want to be on Broadway. Like that's, that's what I wanted to do. Okay. So I really want, cause that seems to be a really a soft spot with you about your childhood. I want you to hone in on that. I am. I want you to real, what is that about dancing that? And I think you hit on it. It's that freedom. It's that liberation. It's that Shakti expression. Yeah. You We're are doing you're the warrior. Go, go, go beat that Ravana. Beat him. So, all right, you guys, thank you so much for doing this. We're going to yeah. be doing again at Aquarius Rising Africa when we close out the challenge. We'll be, are y'all going to be doing a 60 day challenge in January? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bring it on. Yes. Why not? 60 days is nothing. After you do 30, you're like, yes, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll have a wonderful day. And to you guys watching us, let us know your experiences down in the comment section below. I'm sure hearing um, all of these ladies talk about their experiences, it, it hopefully didn't make you feel as alone for everything we're all kind of going through because you are not alone. We are all just walking each other home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another Ram Dass quote, treat everyone you meet like they're God dressed in drag because they are. Oh, the Christians will hate that, won't they? <laughs> All right, guys. Bye, everybody.